What's up, YouTube? Um, before anything, I just want to thank all my subscribers. Every week, I'm getting more and more. I'm really excited to show you guys more videos. Um, sorry I haven't put up any videos in a while. I've been kind of busy, but uh, today I'm going to talk about some of the basics of breeding crested geckos. Stay tuned. So obviously the first thing we need when breeding crested geckos would be a male and a female. So you can see this adult gecko just has a flat surface by the vent which indicates it's a female. There's a better look at the vent of a female crested gecko. See, totally flat. Some females might, ev might even have a small bump but for the most part they're flat. Now let me show you a male vent. That's what the bulge looks like on a male crested gecko. As you can see it sticks out pretty good from the vent of the animal. A female crested gecko again will just have a flat surface there instead of that little bulge. Alright, so a huge component of breeding crested geckos would be the lay box for the females. Um, the lay box basically consists of peat moss or organic soil or just forest moss that you mix up and it should be pretty humid. Alright, uh, what I do is I put water until it's pretty fluffy but not so much that it just drips out. Um, this will allow them to dig around in there and lay their eggs and feel comfortable whenever they want to, okay? It also works as a very good humid hide if they need a shed or, or anything like that. This is what one of my breeding groups looks like. Um, as you can see, I have the male right there and female number one, female number two. Plenty of room for them to run around, climb, a lay box right there. And everything a crested gecko needs in its breeding enclosure. Here's another breeding enclosure, except this one is just two females that were already fertilized and they're just egg laying now. Female number one, and female number two. Alright, so something that everybody should take in consideration when breeding cressids is that the temperature and the feeding. Feeding should, in my opinion, should be done every night. When I am not breeding, I usually just feed every other night. But when I'm breeding my geckos, I feed every night. And I make sure I give them a lot of bugs, a lot of protein. That's one thing. The temperature... I have found out that if it's a little bit higher, maybe around lower 80s or high 70s, the geckos tend to to be more responsive towards each other, okay? Um, that's, that's, those are two things that you may want to check if you have a male that's not breeding with a female. It might be the feeding or the temperature. Also, the first time breeders usually take a little bit longer than than the more experienced breeders obviously the males don't find it so easy to grab a hold of the female and breed her so you just have to have a lot of patience okay um an important thing is when you're breeding crested geckos you should have a cooling period where the females won't be in contact with any males 
and that's just for them to rest their bodies and heal up and to recalcify their bodies from the from the breeding process these two females right now are they are let me find her this is Nella they're in the cooling process right now as you can see she's she's gained some weight again usually a lot of my females lose a little bit of weight when they're braiding because of the egg laying and all of that but right now she's cooling so she's uh she's gaining weight back up and she still may lay some fertile eggs because they do retain sperm but as long as they don't have that constant male on their backs trying to breed them they should do fine so basically you should cool them for about four to five months in the year that's personally what I do and then breed them for the other months okay That's Nella and this is Parchita. They are both cooling. I keep my females together when they're cooling because they seem to get along. And as you can see, they enjoy their food. <laughs> Okay, so you paired up your geckos and now you have eggs. Now, there's three main substances that the Rachidectylus breeders mostly use. That would be the vermiculite, perlite, or the superhatch, the Rapashi superhatch. Me personally, I found find more success with the superhatch, but uh, you could e use either or or a mixture of any. So, this is my incubator. I basically grab the container, poke some holes through it, not too many holes, just enough to get some ventilation going on, and filled it up with a super hatch and put, poured water in it until it wasn't dripping anymore. So it's just, it's still moist as you can see, but not too wet where it might mold the eggs. The eggs will usually take about, depending on the temperature, 60 to 100 days to incubate. And then you got baby geckos. So this is just a look at the, of my incubator, okay? All right, for those who are starting to breed crested geckos who are looking to get started, I would definitely suggest um, looking up more inf information. There's a lot of w good websites such as uh, Pangea Reptile Forums um, and just a whole bunch of websites that you could find more information on. One advice, piece of advice I would give you is to, uh, to not just breed for the hell of it. You should want to breed to redefine the species as is um, maybe a certain morph or certain colors patterns whatever you want that's the the beauty of it that you could play with a whole bunch of patterns colors with all these animals they are very the variety in these animals is second to none and the possibilities are endless so again I would just advise to try to redefine the, the crested gecko species by putting together two animals that will just redefine the certain morph or if you think there's certain traits that you won't want to apply to certain morphs, make combinations, you could really play with it. But uh, that's my piece of advice, you know, don't just breed for the hell of it. 